In today's video, I'll be showing you how to build this machine that makes precision mechanisms with the Create mod. So without further ado, let's get to building. These are all the items we'll be using in today's build. Now to make a precision mechanism, you need to first start by deploying a cogwheel onto a gold sheet. Then you deploy a large cogwheel onto that same sheet. And the third step is to deploy an iron nugget onto that sheet. And you'll need to repeat step one through three five times. So after step three, you'll go back to step one. And once this is done five times, you'll have an 80% chance to get a precision mechanism or a 20% chance to get random salvage, which means that each precision mechanism will cost you one gold sheet, five cogwheels, five large cogwheels, and five iron nuggets. Now after filling an entire double chest with precision mechanisms, these are all of the random salvage items I got. So as you can see, you can get gold sheets, you can get crushed gold, you can get cogwheels, andesite alloys, gold nuggets, shafts, iron ingots, and clocks. Now, once you take a golden sheet and you deploy a cogwheel onto it, you'll notice that it changes the sheet into this item, which is an incomplete precision mechanism. Now, if you hover over the item, you'll see that it tells you the progress in the recipe sequence. For this mechanism, you can see that the progress is 2 out of 15, which means I already deployed a cogwheel and a large cogwheel into it and it says that the next step is to deploy an iron nugget onto it. Now these incomplete precision mechanisms cannot be stacked, which makes them more difficult to store away, but after you complete the precision mechanism, they can stack. Now for this system, we'll start by digging out a 4x4 four four block area one block deep into the ground, and we'll dig down these six blocks as well. Then we'll place a temporary block here with a smooth stone on top and break the temporary block. Then we'll place a 2x2x3 two by two by block vault here. Then we'll place a temporary block here with two shafts on both sides and then connect them up with a belt. And on top of this belt is where we'll place the three deployers that will deploy the cogwheel, large cogwheel, and iron nugget onto the sheet. We'll place the output brass funnel here and an input andesite funnel here. Now to filter this brass funnel, we'll actually use a list filter set to only allow gold sheets and incomplete precision mechanisms. This means that this brass funnel won't output complete precision mechanisms or any of the random salvage. Then we'll filter this brass funnel with the list filter. Now to get the items into the deployers, we'll place chutes on top of each of them and place a double chest on top of each chute. Now when we start the mechanism, we'll need to place cogwheels in this chest, large cogwheels in this one, and iron nuggets in this one. Now if the deployer detects something that it can deploy the item in its hand onto that's on the belt, it will stop that item from moving on the belt even if the belt has rotational power. And once it's done deploying, the belt will move across to the next place on the belt. This conveyor belt actually creates a loop for the incomplete mechanisms to go across. So this will output a gold sheet. And after the deployers deploy their items onto it, it'll go back into this vault where it will then come back out as an incomplete precision mechanism and then complete the next part in the recipe sequence. And it'll do that sequence five times, and after that it will either turn into a precision mechanism or random salvage. Now to more easily access the precision mechanisms, we'll place a double chest here with a chute and a brass funnel outputting onto it. Then we'll filter this to only let out complete precision mechanisms. Now we'll place a double chest here for the random salvage. Then we'll place an input andesite funnel with an output brass funnel coming from the vault. We'll place two shafts here and connect them up with a belt. Now to tell this brass funnel to only output the salvage items, we'll place an incomplete 
a complete precision mechanism and a gold sheet in this list filter and then we'll set that to deny those three items then we'll filter that brass funnel with that filter and now any of the items that aren't those three that we put on the filter will drop into this belt and get carried into this chest now we'll place a rotation speed controller here with a large cogwheel on top and we'll set this rotation speed controller to 64 RPM. Then we'll want to break out this block. Then we'll place four in case chain drives here. We'll place one gearbox and four more drives to connect up the deployers to power. And we'll place two more drives to connect up this belt to rotational power. Then we'll place five smooth stone here for the floor. Now we'll need a place to input the gold sheets into the item vault and to do that we'll place two chests here. We'll place one input andesite funnel into the vault and one output from the chest on top of it. Now you can place gold sheets in this chest and they'll automatically drop into the item vault. And a good thing to know is that this item vault can only hold 240 stacks of items. But since there are going to be a lot of incomplete precision mechanisms in this vault which aren't stackable, you don't ever want to add more than 240 gold sheets at a time. The next step is to give this whole system power and to do that we'll actually be using three water wheels and to give the water wheels water so they can spin we'll place one water bucket to waterlog this funnel and you might be thinking that the water should push the items from this brass funnel over to this side so they'll never actually get into the salvage chest. But the momentum of the items coming out of this funnel is enough to where the belt will catch the items before they can flow too far away from it. And the reason I put the water over on this funnel and not here is because you can see it won't actually flow inside the funnel. Which means that if we try to place a water wheel here it won't generate any stress units because it's not flowing the correct direction. But if we move the water over to here you can see that it flows just fine. Now we'll place three water wheels here to power the system. As you can see, these two belts are actually spinning the wrong direction and if that happens to you, you can just come down here and reverse the direction that the rotation speed controller is outputting the power. And now these two belts are spinning the correct direction. Now we can actually label these chests by placing placards on them. And you can label this one so you know you should only put cogwheels in that. We'll label this one as large cogwheels. We'll label this one for iron nuggets. Label this one for gold sheets. And label this one for precision mechanisms. Now if you want to cover up the sides of this whole machine, you can place four blocks across like this and then build them six blocks tall. And you can do the same thing on this side as well. And if you want to put a roof on it, you can place 10 blocks like this. But we'll actually want to place three copycat panels here. Then you can give them the texture of the block you want. Then you'll want to place three more copycat panels here textured to be the same block. Now, since copycat panels aren't counted as a full block, these chests can open even with the copycat panels above them. Now, you can use any block you want. I just decided to use calcite pillars, but if your block has a stair variant, what you can do is place stairs like this so it actually fills in the whole roof rather than leaving that little gap. But since calcite pillars don't have a stair variant, I just use the copycat panels here. Now you can actually see the background through the gaps in some of these blocks. And if you don't want those gaps, you can place three copycat panels like this. You can texture them to be whatever block you're using. This way, the chest will still be able to open even though there's blocks above them since they're copycat panels. And if you want to place a different block for the background behind the chutes and chests, you can actually go behind it and just place six blocks of whatever choice you want. 
And now that there's blocks behind, you can't see into the background. And a cool thing you can do with shoots is you can right click on them with the wrench and you can actually see the items go through. Now I like having the glass on the shoot, so I'll keep it like this. But if you prefer having no glass, you can just right click them with the wrench again and they'll go back to how they were before. And another thing you can do with shoots is if you want to encase them, you can take a block of industrial iron and then right click it on the chute and it'll take the shape of a full industrial iron block. And just like whenever you try to put, say, an andesite casing on a shaft, it doesn't actually use up the block of industrial iron. So all you need is one industrial iron to convert all of the chutes into the full block. Now if we put cogwheels in this chest, you can see that it puts the cogwheels in the hand of the deployer. We'll do the same thing for the other chests with their respective materials. Now the last thing to do is place gold sheets in this chest and watch the deployers work. Now after some time it should start making precision mechanisms and they'll go in this chest. And the precision mechanisms are stacking up in the chest. And the salvage is doing the same thing in this chest. And this means that the system is working properly. This is the finished build. Don't forget to leave a comment down below so that you'd like to see me build next. And while you're down there, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.